Oh, there we go. Steve, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Yeah, no, okay. you're there. Yeah, now I can hear some. Series. Uh, we're in now to part four. If you missed any of the previous webinars, uh, they're still available as recordings on our website. <coughs> On that page, uh, all of the speakers, please press mute for, for, for the time being, please. And um, on that uh, website, you actually see the announcements for all upcoming webinars as well. Um, everyone who registered for today uh, will also automatically receive an invitation to the next webinar that's uh, scheduled for uh, September, most likely September 16. But again, you will receive uh, an email. Uh, my name is Marcus Schmidt. I'm based out of Berlin and uh, with uh, Germany Trade and Invest. I'm really happy to say that we have a great set of speakers today, uh, now that we can hear everyone as well. And we actually have a very exciting, very international audience, as I just uh, noticed going through the list. We actually have, uh, believe it or not, registrations from the not only the U.S., but uh, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Denmark, Spain, U.K., India, Italy, Netherlands, Norway. And I probably forgot uh, one or two, so if I did not mention your home country, uh, please accept my apologies. It almost sounds like the uh, list of teams playing at the Soccer World Cup uh, that's going to start later tonight. Uh, but luckily, we still have a couple hours, so, so we should be good to go. Um, again, we have a great set of speakers, uh, as I mentioned. Um, we're going to start in a few minutes with my colleague Sandra, Dr. Sandro Buto who will give us an overview of our Germany's uh, biotechnology landscape. Next will be Dr. Claudia Engelbrecht uh, with uh, Bio Deutschland or Bio Germany, the Ger uh, that's Germany's Biotechnology Industry Association. And she will tell us about her organization and the services they provide. Following Claudia Engelbrecht will be Dr. Ulrike Pogoda de la Vega, who will speak about best practices in uh, biotech funding. And uh, as our last speaker, we will have Steve Novak, who is joining us from Colorado today, who will speak about his company, CBR International, uh, but also about the German subsidiary, CBR Biotech Strategies, uh, why they expanded to Germany and how they went about it. 
And at the end, we'll have uh, hopefully plenty of time to address questions. Now that we're 10 minutes uh, late, um, maybe who can stick around? We'll try to hang on a little bit longer, uh, go maybe a little bit beyond the initially planned hour. Uh, if you do have to leave, I understand. Um, We'll also record this session um, and put it up, up on our website. Um, so if you miss anything, uh, you should be able to go back um, later on. Um, we already received some emails by email, uh, but please also use the um, uh, the question function on your on, on your toolbar that you see should see to the right. Um, very happy to see that uh, many of you already used that function, uh, signaling that uh, you could not initially initially hear me. Uh, before I begin, allow me just very, very few sentences about our organization. I'm going to be really brief, I, I promise. Uh, again, our organization is Germany Trade and Invest. Um, we are the foreign trade and inward investment promotion agency of Germany. Uh, what does that mean? It actually means a lot of things. We have a staff of over 300, 350, in fact, uh, around the world, and we do a lot of things. But what is probably most relevant to you is that we help international companies to set up operations in Germany. All of our uh, inquiries, of course, treated confidential, and uh, services that we provide are actually free of charge. Now I understand there's no such thing as a free lunch. We're the one exception. Um, as long, the only thing that we ask for is uh, when you do become active in Germany, um, we like to hear how you're doing, um, how your business grows, your business activities, um, how many jobs you have created or intend to create. Um, so that's, we, just, we would like to have a rough idea about that, but, but that's pretty much it. So how do we help companies specifically? If you've been on the website, you've probably noticed that we have a ton of publications, uh, ranging from how to do business guides to very industry sector specific information. But uh, that's really not the core of the business. The core is uh, providing individual consulting services. And that means uh, we help companies identify um, their respective markets, show market opportunities, um, also look at you know, how the industry exactly functions, could be supply chains, could, could be other uh, topics. Um, we advise on how to best enter the German market. We help with the site selection. We help to find partners. We provide legal and tax information um, and also for funding and financing. Now the money for funding does not come out of our pockets, but uh, we know most of the programs that are available can identify them and help uh, in the application process. Now, before I introduce our first speaker, uh, Sandra Buto, what I would like to do is do a uh, very quick poll that you will see here in uh, just a second. And what I would like you to do is um, you see the question, which of our services could be of interest for your business? And if you could be so kind to mark uh, with a, it might be market and industry reports, market entry analysis, legal and tax related information, project support, funding, financing information, advisory services, local partner, network matchmaking, or well, none of the above. If you give us uh, an idea uh, what might be most relevant for you, we can, we can tailor this session and upcoming sessions a little bit better uh, to your needs. Uh, so if you're so kind uh, to mark on your screen uh, one of the choices or several, if uh, multiple answers are possible, and then press on the send button, that would be terrific. And I'm going to close the survey here in just a second. Okay, I think most of you are through. Thank you very much. Now, um, let's start with the first presentation. My colleague, Sandra Buto, who is a, a consulting manager with Germany Trade and Invest. Um, I'm going to do very, very brief introductions in the interest of time. Um, all the CVs, by the way, are also up on the website, um, uh, on the event website, so you can always go back if, if you're interested in, in learning more. Now, Sandra studied chemistry in Berlin, Germany, uh, and that's where she also received her PhD at the Charité, um, where she focused on neuroscience um, after a postdoctoral fellowship 
Um, she worked as a network manager um, at Biotop, which is one of the premier biotechnology uh, clusters in Germany, also located in Berlin, before she later joined uh, Germany Trade and Invest. And she now focuses um, mostly on biotechnology companies, um, also medical device companies, and um, has been working with many companies around the world. I'm going to transfer to Sandra. Uh, I would like to ask Sandra to go ahead with her presentation. Yeah. Hello. Thank you for the nice introduction. Also, warm welcome from my side. I don't know if you can hear me good. Um, OK, let's start. What is my part in this webinar today? I would like to tell you some hard facts on the German biotechnology and point out why we are the second largest market for medical biotech in the world behind the USA. I will take um, this. In the second part, I will explain to you how we reach this and how you can find entrance to this worldwide known excellence. Um, details on this we will also hear from Dr. Engelbrecht in the talk later from the Biotech Association Bio Deutschland. Let me end with an example of how the German, German government support already the already strong research and development in Germany. Other examples of research funding we will hear later in the talk of Dr. Bruder de la Vega from the project management Jülich. Um, in 2013, we had 570 dedicated biotechnology companies with an annual sale of 3 billion euro or nearly 4 billion US dollars. These companies spent about one third of their sales in research and development. Uh, in addition, we have 130 companies where biotechnology is only one aspect of business. These companies employ nearly the same number of people in the biotechnology sector than the dedicated biotechnology companies. Altogether, there are 35,000 employees in the biotechnology industry in Germany. Geographically, we have four hotspots of biotechnology industry in Germany, the, the federal states of Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg in the south of Germany. In the western part of Germany, we have the North Rhine-Westphalia area or federal state and the capital, so-called capital region, Berlin, Brandenburg in the eastern part of Germany. The federal states of Saxony and Thuringia showed an increase or significant growth of biotechnology companies within the last years, and I think they will get more and more important also for foreign investors. Watchers of the German biotech sector will have noted a constant picture of the industry, also in the area of activity. Nearly 50% of the companies active in biotechnology are also active in the medicine health sector, so the so-called red biotechnology. Out of these biotechnology companies in the red biotechnology, 50% work with and on biotechnology platforms. One third is working on the development of diagnostics, followed by the drug development. Because of the need to fill the product pipeline of the companies, nearly all companies have their own research and development established and are promoted by funding. Over the last two years, the public funding increased by 4 and 5 percent to nearly 50 million euro or euro or 67 million US dollars, all this for the dedicated biotechnology companies. Way. In most cases, the funding projects are cooperation projects, so it's not surprisingly that the survey of more than 230 companies showed that there are nearly 1,000 cooperations between research institutes and companies. Yet to sum up the first part of the presentation, in Germany we have a strong biotechnology industry with a high funding and therefore also excellent cooperation possibilities. 
but how could we reach this and how is it possible to make it also re reachable for you? This world leading excellence is only reachable by a very good coordinated and high class biotechnology landscape. I would like to explain you in the following part. At the moment there are 30 biotechnology or life science clusters in Germany organized in the working group of bioregions under the roof of the German Biotechnology Association, BioDeutschland. We will hear later more about this. These biotechnology clusters have the task to promote the biotechnology assets in Germany. They are the bridge between the industry, the science and the politics and point out the special skills of each reason they are responsible for. They also provide a lot of services from business development to the information about funding opportunities, partnering and in industry contacts, contact the company foundation. They do a lot of public relations, trade shows and events. They provide information and news to the customers and they have own, bio, bio, own technology transfer units. So you can see together with the service Markus showed us before from Germany Trade In and West, we are together your gate to the German biotechnology. But I want to point out a last thing that could be of interest for you if, you, if you're thinking about having your own presence in Germany uh, in the biotechnology field. The German government, exactly the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, spent 700 million euro or 950 million US dollar for the implementation of six so-called German Centers for Health Research, all this until 2015. These six virtual centers are the roof for high-class health and medicine research within the most important indications like neurodegenerative diseases, diabetes, infection, cancer, lung research, and cardiovascular diseases. Yeah, I think I got you a lot of information uh, on the way the last five minutes would like to sum up all this. So in Germany, we have this strong biotechnology industry with regional hotspots. We have an excellent cluster and competence network organized in the German bioregion. And we have a famous governmental research and development support. Yes, yeah, so what to say? Do not hesitate to be part of all this and plan your expansion to Germany from partnering to sales and service, research and development and production. I think I'm the person to talk to in any case. Thank you for your attention and get in contact with me if you need any help. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you can hear me at the moment. I think there are some more problems on on the uh, speakers. Okay, the the next one would be Claudia, Dr. Claudia Engelbrecht from 
Bio Deutschland. Um, but we have to solve the problem first. Now I, I see Dr. Engelbrecht, I think um, you should be the next one. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, okay. great. Okay, so you can start. Okay, perfect. Did I have an introduction of any kind? Um, I couldn't hear anything, so it's no problem. We cannot hear anything. So, <laughs> yeah, so perhaps I can do a little introduction um, to Dr. Claudia Engelbrecht, um, some words on her. She, she is with Bio Deutschland, the biotechnology association in, in Germany. And um, perhaps on your CV, perhaps you can say some words mm. because um, That's I fine. don't yeah, okay. I just wanted so to make sure that anybody can hear me, that I'm not just you and me talking now. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I think okay, everyone great. can hear you, so we can start. Thank you for okay, your talk. Okay, great. You're welcome. Um, well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you, Marcus, I assume, for the introduction. I don't know, I couldn't hear anything. And thank you, Germany Trade and Invest, uh, for giving me the opportunity to introduce the Biotechnology Industry Organization Deutschland or short Bio Deutschland. Um, the association uh, Bio Deutschland was uh, founded in 2004, so we are celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. We're really thrilled about that. Uh, we were founded uh, back then because there was a big need for a really independent national biotechnology association here in Germany and uh, the, an association specifically for the small and medium-sized enterprises in biotech. As headquarter, we chose Berlin, uh, not only because it's a great city, but because we are very close to politicians and governmental agencies. Um, as you can see in the, this chart, you can see in the small graph here on the right side that it, it actually reflects our member, the growth in our member base. Since our foundation in 2004, we had a steady increase in members. We now have about 300 members. And as was intended, the core of our member base are innovative, small and medium-sized enterprises of the biotech sector. But we also have uh, several uh, members from different um, branches, which are all somehow related to us. There are technology transfer offices, patent attorneys, service providers, CROs, also some investors, and as Sandra mentioned already before, there are also several bioregions uh, in our member base. The, the, the groundwork of our association, the content work, is performed in our working groups. We have uh, 10 of them at the moment, and they work on all subjects relevant to our sector. As you can imagine, finance and taxation is a very important sector. Uh, we are currently working on a position paper on the new venture capital law. Uh, we have working groups on regulatory affairs, health policy, of course, industrial economy. We also have a working group on German-US-American cooperation. They are not meeting regularly, but there might be a good reference point if you have any questions from uh, coming from the US. I realize there are a lot of other nationalities listening now, but anyway. So what do we do when we do what all good associations do? We try to establish and maintain a good business environment for biotech SMEs. <coughs> um, we do, we do order to do, in order to do that, we have to do a lot of lobby work. Um, that means we disseminate and communicate uh, the position papers from our working groups and other publications to the legislation here in Berlin. And uh, we also have an interest and in, uh, we also build networks. We have established a uh, national and international network, mostly through the conference and conferences and events that we organize. Um, <clears throat> for example, we're organizing the German Biotech Days. That's a yearly event. And this year we had about 800 attendees. Uh, that was very successful and a great place for networking and for getting to know the German biotech landscape. We also organize partnering conferences, like the European Business uh, Development Conference. 
And we also attend trade fairs. Um, we will be in two weeks from now in San Diego at the Bio. So we have a booth there. If you want to meet us, please come by. We are in the German Pavilion. And we also uh, attend other trade fairs, like the Bio Europe, for example. So as Sandra mentioned already, we're very closely connected to the German bioregions. Uh, almost all of the bioregions are organized in the AK bioregions, as, as you heard before. And this uh, AK uh, decided to move the managing office to the headquarters of Bio Deutschland. So we run the managing office for them, and several of those bioregions are also our members. We have a lot of international partners. You can see three of them here. The European Confederation of Pharmaceutical Enter Entrepreneurs, UCOP, is one of our partners. And we also try to lobby for the interest in an internationally coordinated way. As some of you are probably aware of, a lot of the directives or laws that affect us in, in our biotech sector and the high-tech sector are not necessarily made in, at the national level, but decided on the EU level. So uh, the EU, or being close to the EU government is also important for us. And we are a member uh, of the European Association for Bio Industries, Europa Bio. And we're also a member of the Bio Biotechnology Industry Organization of the United States. So what can we offer for you? Um, uh, analogous to the GTIA, we can provide a lot of information about business opportunities in Germany. And of course, if you're interested, we can also help you to build a German business network. Um, as you can see in this slide, we also have other strong partners um, uh, that are not regular members. As I said, we represent the small and medium-sized uh, uh, enterprises, but we have strong supporters of, from the big pharmaceutical industry, as you can see in this slide as well. And this support is also quite important to us. Well, I invite you to benefit from our network. It would be great if you would like to contact us. You can see the address or the contact information in the slide. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia Engelbrecht. I think you can hear me again. Someone keeps pulling the plug here on my audio, but uh, I'm hopefully back again. Um, Thank you for the excellent um, presentation. And uh, we'll keep going. Next presentation is uh, by Dr. Ulrike Pogura de la Vega, uh, project manager at the um, Biotech R&D Center uh, in Jülich, um, where she is supervising federal grants in the uh, life science sector. Now, she also studied biology and also earned a PhD. Um, actually in um, working with the German Aerospace Center, Radiation Biology Division um, in Cologne. Yes, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me all. Um, then I'd like to continue with my presentation. I would like to greet the audience of this webinar. And I would like to express my thanks to Germany Trade and Invest for inviting our agency to contribute to this webinar as well. We don't see your screen yet. You may oh, OK. Sorry. Do you see it now? Yes. No OK. Well, I'm going to start now anyway with the first slide, so you haven't missed anything yet. Um, our key mission is to manage the funding of research and innovation, and our aim is to combine scientific, structural, and administrative competence. In order to fulfill the assigned duties, it is mandatory that we are a neutral partner. Importantly, this is not driven by um, economic interests of our own. Here you, can, you have an outline of the services we as project management agency uh, for the Federal Ministry of Education and Research offer. Our competence profile spans a broad scope from energy to sustainability, climate protection to life sciences as well as maritime technologies. 
Our key feature is to manage and compile, compile funding procedures, develop and coordinate regional technology platforms and clusters. As Sandra Buto pointed out already in her talk, also clusters offer a wide range of services as well. Our active, um, and we are active in promoting technology transfer and business startups. This can also be um, can also be can only be achieved by the commitment and support of a motivated staff. Currently, our agency employs around about 800 staff managers members who manage a funding volume of approximately 1.4 million euros in 2013. So here I would like to come to a few funding programs of interest. There is, for example, um, KMU Innovative, Innovative um, which also spans a broad, a broad sector not, and has um, specific um, focuses, for example, biotechnology or medical devices but also in um, telecommunication and the like. Um, it especially, um, since small and medium-sized enterprises play a vital role in biotechnology and medical technology, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research has created this funding initiative, KAMU Innovative, specifically to target innovative SMEs. This has also offered an incentive um, to initiate regional but also occasionally led to land spending cooperations between the partners that received a grant. Um, as the next example I would like to show you or present is GoBio. It, uh, since in order to ensure steady flow of startups in the life sciences, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research has, amongst other measures, launched a competition GoBio. Here, they have recognized that business startups are essential to continually renew the private sector, especially due to the fact that science-based startups contribute to the commercialization of new technologies and sustain industry's innovative strength. This, this competition offers financial as well as non-material support in the initial startup phases to entrepreneurial teams from all branches of the life sciences, including adjacent disciplines, which is, which is a special feature of this funding program. Next, I would like to mention also federal land specific programs which provide a span of specific target groups to field specific funding. It must be clearly stated that each land has a land specific proposal and granting process and which can differ quite clearly from the federal granting process. Progr programs of interest um, are being provided by the following um, federal states here in Germany, um, Bavaria, for example, Baden-Württemberg, North Rhine-Westphalia, and also, as already mentioned by Sandro Buto, to Thuringia, Saxony, and Saxony-Anhalt. Next, I would like to give um, an example of um, BMBF granting processes, and I will come back to the two mentioned funding programs. First, I would like to outline the process in, at, in KMU Innovative. This is a two-stage process. It has a semi-annual deadline, always in April and October 15. Um, the average duration of the decision process is eight weeks. So um, from the moment the deadline has deceased, um, the pre-proposals are being screened and are being, um, then we decide which of the reviews, reviewers re will review um, the single project. 
after this evaluation by the external review board, it takes about, in general, four to five months until um, a full proposal of the candidates are handed in and are being um, checked and the grant is provided and the grant is mostly provided for approximately three years. Here it is interesting to mention that most land-specific funding programs follow this scheme, so they do orientate themselves along this um, type of funding process, but they have individual detailed differences. But there are also multi-stage grant processes, for example, in GoBio, which I will explain in detail in the following slides. As depicted, this process is quite long, this time scale spanning years. Target group of phase R are entrepreneurial teams based at universities, whereas phase two is self-contained and is open only to successful participants of phase two. This process includes a regular evaluation by an external review board. And then, as mentioned before, this competition offers financial as well as non-material support in the initial startup phases, which is very exclusive to this funding program. It offers, for example, funds for investments, patents. Patents are not so unusual. They are also provided to um, participants or grant um, awardees from CAM Innovativ, but also for consumables and especially business training, consultancy and advice, and especially startup coaching. An important fact is that, as stated in this scheme, Phase 1 of GoBio provides funding of up to 100%, whereas in Phase 2, the entrepreneurial teams receive a pro rata funding of up to 70%. Now I would like to sh show and explain a little bit this very complex evaluation process and granting process of GoBio. First of all, um, a pre-proposal is handed in. These pre-proposals are being evaluated by the external review board. Out of the pre-proposals, candidates are being selected and are invited to hand in full proposals. These full proposals are again reviewed by the external board and from these full proposals, they select a few, um, the grant recipients. The awardees of phase one have to um, are con being continued evaluated um, of their project success, success especially um, by supervising and confirming that they, they have completed their milestones as depicted in their full proposal. The review board recommends the follow-up grant support for phase two approximately six months before the, <coughs> sorry, before the phase one duration has ended. One key must for in order to apply and to receive grants in phase two is that these candidates and selected entrepreneurial teams have to found an enterprise and that is the reason why they only receive a pro rata funding of approximately or maximum 70 percent. Now I would like to outline a few best practice examples. For example, um, this example shows very nicely um, that KMU Innovative Initiative can provide research results that attract global, global key players in their sector. For example, Provider um, transferred its experimental cyclene-dependent kinase inhibitor program to AstraZeneca. As you can see here in the slide, 
Each funded project receives an individual unique file or reference number, which prov provides fast access to a broad public information pool, which I refer will refer to later. The project itself received a grant for this research that they have transferred um, in the time of 2009 to 2011. And you see it is a rather long um, process until they finally can be transferred, which has happened this year in January in 2014. Um, the next example has been chosen also to show that there, it is possible that grants can be received also or can be applied from foreign-owned companies. For example, Active Motive Chromium, which is an associate of, an, of a U.S. American company, um, applied successfully for a grant in the KMU Innovative Funding Initiative. The main difference to the, to the application of a national-based, which is meant in this case Germany-based company, is the need for a declaration of a Germany-based foreign majority-owned subsidiary. So this is very important and also each company has to provide also further detailed information on behalf of their um, monetary needs and um, we have to process and um, depend on this information we, de we, we provide the grants or not. Next I would like to give you an example of um, GoBio awardee or grant recipient. They have um, run through the phase one and then as I mentioned before in phase two an, a company has to be founded and it's called ITERA Medical GmbH and this is a very good example also or um, for our funding program because they have been awarded the prestigious German Innovation Award in this year in the, um, in the sector of uh, startup companies and they formed a U.S. subsidiary. This company is active in the sector of in vivo Im imaging. ITERA develops and markets a novel optoacoustic imaging technology. Um, the so-called multispectral optoacoustic tomography addresses many of the shortcomings of today's in vivo imaging technologies in comparison to the, today's leading molecular imaging methods. The resolution of the um, multispectral optoacoustic tomography is much higher. It addresses the preclinical market but can also be applied for clinical trials and in various applications for clinical diagnostics. So all these results that have provided the company with such a unique um, selling or selling um, characteristic has been achieved during the funding uh, via the GoBio funding program. Last, I would like to mention the reference links um, and hand them to you. Um, in the first, the first bullet shows you the link you can, where you can find further and detailed information to the funding initiative Come U Innovative. There you can also find the contact information of the respective colleague that is responsible of it. If you are further interested, in the awardees of this year's German Innovation Award. I mentioned or listed here the link as well of interest and this is where you would need also the mentioned unique file number. If, oh no, that's 
that when you look, if you're interested in finding further and detailed information to the diverse projects that have been funded by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, you should check the last mentioned bullet. Here you can, you have further links that show you how to get to the funding catalog and for this you need the unique file number. With that it is much faster and efficient, you can much faster find the requested information. The third um, bullet gives you um, a contact information of our funding advisory service which provides guidance to most applicable national and European funding programs that are available here in Germany. Lastly, I would like to thank you for your attention and provide you with my contact information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ulrike Pogona de la Vega. Thank you very much for your presentation. Well, I'll take that right back. All right, and uh, before we come to our last speaker, I hope you can hear me again, not that I'm being dropped again. Uh, before we come to Steve uh, Novak, I would uh, do a um, last uh, call and actually see um, if um, you're currently looking for funding or partnering, and you can see the options are uh, you're currently looking for funding, you're currently looking for partnering, or both, or, or not. Uh, the above. Um, if you would be so kind to answer, uh, we'll, we'll take your answers uh, here for a couple of seconds and um, then we'll be right back with Steve. Okay. I'm going to close them out and then our last speaker is uh, Steve Novak, uh, who's joining us from Colorado today. Steve uh, graduated from the University of uh, Utah in Salt Lake City, uh, where he earned a Bachelor in Psychology. He also completed Master's in International Affairs uh, from the Catholic University uh, of America in Washington, D.C., and uh, in Information Resource Management uh, from Syracuse University. Uh, Steve, Steve spent uh, more than 20 years uh, at the U.S. Army as a career military intelligence officer before he joined uh, CBR International in January 2011 as Vice President for Strategic Business Development, uh, and he's also the Managing Director of CBR Biotech Strategies, GmbH, uh, CBR International subsidiary in Berlin. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Steve. Great. Thank you. First of all, can you hear me okay? Yes, I okay. think. Okay, great, great. I wanted to do a sound check here. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank both uh, Drs. Marcus Schmidt and uh, Sandra Guteau from German Trade and Invest for this opportunity and my esteemed colleagues who are participating in the webinar today. What I'd like to do is uh, give a very short overview of who we are and how our relationship uh, with German Trade and Invest grew into a new company within Berlin. Uh, initially, uh, what I want to see your screen yet. Uh, you may want to check if, uh, if you go on the okay. Citrix button. Yep, there we go. Thank you, you have it now? Yep, thanks. Oh, okay, great. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to explain who CBR really is. And CBR is, um, as a matter of fact, I need, it doesn't seem to be uh, clicking forward here. My screen, uh, my slides don't seem to be advancing, Marcus. Go on the Adobe again, and then you can click to. Yeah. Now, you, oops, no. Hmm. Yeah, click on your PDF again. Yeah, and now you should be able to, to click to. Okay, there we go. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Okay. First of all, CBR Biotech Strategies is a new company in Berlin. But before I can explain why we created CBR Biotech Strategies uh, GmbH in Berlin, I need to explain a little bit more about the parent company, CBR International Corp, which was founded uh, several years ago in Boulder, Colorado. More on that in just a second. 
But we have what's called the CBR family of companies. The core company here in Boulder, CBR International Corp, True Submit, which is our new branch for electronic uh, publications that we can now offer electronic submissions worldwide for companies looking for approvals through agencies such as the European Medicines Agency and the Federal Drug Administration in the Washington DC, the FDA. So we have a family of companies that provide comprehensive services from what I call DNA to delivery worldwide. So first of all, to explain why we have our company in Berlin, I want to go into a brief background of CBR International Corp. CBR International Corp in its service offerings for a majority of international clients found that we were lacking in certain services. For example, we could not function as an authorized representative for non-EU companies trying to uh, receive approvals through EMA, for example. So we needed uh, a way to expand that. CBR International Corp in and of itself, as you can see on this particular slide, is located in a very beautiful part of Colorado called Boulder, Colorado. And this is a view from our window in the back of the office. And you can see we're located under the beautiful Flat Iron Mountains. And for anyone, of course, who would ever come to this area, we'll host all of you and, and show you a wonderful time here in the Colorado mountains. CBR International Corp, founded in 2001, was primarily a small company funded by actually my younger sister, Dr. Jean Novak, after she left the FDA. She was a reviewer and approver at both CBER and CEDAR and felt that she could take her expertise and apply that uh, to a service offering for companies that are looking for a streamlined or critical path to approval. And the way she does that is by partnering individually with the clients as an extension of that company, providing seamless services across the board. And you can see that this is something that we take very seriously and uh, it's something that's unique within the industry. Last year, as an example of the type of service offerings that we provided, you can see that um, a bulk of our services are in scientific affairs, clinical oversight, and regulatory strategy. I'll give you a few seconds here to look at those statistics and those percentages. Key activities are basically focused on three areas with the, the parent company. Of course, a uh, very personalized FDA representation. My sister actually, having left the FDA, trains a number of the current reviewers and approvers that are sitting in the Rockville, Maryland office now in the Washington, D.C. area, actually approving a lot of these different FDA submissions. Of course, our regulatory and strategy affairs are key. Our clinical strategy and oversight is very important because we actually follow clinical trials at any entry point through completion and provide a very uh, focused laser-like view on all aspects of a clinical trial. And of course, quality, GMP, and we do do a, a large uh, number of preclinical uh, studies. Now, corporate strategy is based on working with the executive management of the company to ensure that we have a critical path that minimizes time, maximizes savings, and assists at a very strategic level focus down to more of a tactical level to ensure that all of the particular actions are, are in place uh, throughout the clinical trial process. This is a typical year for our regulatory efforts. And I'll give the audience a few seconds to look at this. We do a lot of writing, a lot of submissions, and a lot of face-to-face -face meetings with our clients, with the regulatory officials. And of course, we uh, deal with a wide range of product classes. For example, monoclonal antibodies. We have a lot of vaccine work right now. And we do, of course, extensive work with small molecules, antibiotics, and devices. We have several projects right now that are involved with combination products. Some of our uh, achievements over the last several years, the one that I'm very proud of is we are instrumental in one of our clients in actually in uh, based out of Berlin that just received approval through EMA in February and approval 
through uh, the FDA uh, 30 days later for an Alzheimer's indication. This was a this was absolutely uh, uh, cutting edge for both the company and for us in our efforts in assisting this company with their approval process of an extension of their team. This is our office for CBR International Corp in Boulder, Colorado. So when you come out, you'll recognize our front door. And I'll give you a second to look at that address and phone number if anyone's jotting that down. And of course, I'll be available at any time to answer any further questions. Now, that was the basis for creating uh, CBR International, uh, CBR International Corp actually extending out and creating CDR Biotech Strategies GmbH. We had these service offerings, but we were lacking in the ability to function as an authorized representative and to meet the needs and the very specific needs of our European and foreign clients. So before I go into the uh, brief description of CDR Biotech Strategies, I want to talk about uh, our electronic capabilities. We have uh, another new company in this family of companies that can provide electronic submission support and capabilities worldwide for any agency for any type of um, pharmaceutical or device. The electronic publishing includes our life cycle management and we are streamlined to the point where timelines are transparent. We'll take a project and we are immune to the time of day or any weekends or vacation period. We can work straight through to complete a submission in a timely manner, thus saving costs for the, the sponsor. And as you can see here, we have the latest cutting edge software. We are experts already in regulatory in submissions. And we have uh, the ability to provide tailored services and we are multi-country and uh, multi we, have, we do multi-country uh, submissions and we have a global filing capability. Now finally, we're talking about CBR Biotech Strategy, GmbH, and how it impacts on our presence in Europe. Uh, very brief uh, background, about a year ago at this time, we knew that we needed to create a European uh, company or subsidiary. We actually decided to create a whole new company, and that company was focused on how we represent our current clients and potential and future clients within the European Union. This process started a year ago when we first met German Trade and Invest. And German Trade and Invest was instrumental in helping us articulate and outline a plan for us as U.S. citizens with a U.S.-based company to go into Berlin and create a German company, a German registered company. This is our office in Berlin on Tegelerstrasse in uh, Betting. It's actually on the campus of Bayer in Berlin, and we're on. We have the uh, second floor of this building, and we were actually founded in October of 2013. And one of the reasons why we had such a very short timeline is we had several clients that required immediate European representation, and we actually created this company to meet the needs of current clients. We're now servicing the needs of those clients and we're growing our client base as we uh, reach out uh, through the Berlin Brandenburg biocluster and through other parts of Europe and outside of Europe for that matter. So these are our core service offerings as you can see. And again uh, we are going to be expanding our services to include uh, executive training, corporate development, but everything that CBR International Corp. offers can be offered through our CBR Biotech Strategies GmbH. This organization is an extension as a CBR family company to provide comprehensive services worldwide. And I would like to take a second and talk about the incredible support we've received from Germany uh, Trade and Invest. This is a testimonial that uh, I believe with all my heart and if you can take a, a second and please uh, direct your attention to this testimony, you'll see that Germany Trade and Invest provided the support, the guidance, and the high standards that were necessary for us to very quickly 
successfully and legally become a German registered company. And with their efficient and cost effective support, GTAI has become our partner, our business partner of choice, and certainly will be a long term uh, business partner in the future. And finally, just a quick word on CBR family companies. Uh, we are an extension of our clients' uh, team at a global, through a global level. We customize needs when we do our needs assessments. We determine what the most critical cost effective path is, and we are uh, poised to provide um, a very unique, tailored service. This is our contact information in Berlin. You can see we do have. Uh, in addition to the U.S. numbers, I can be reached at uh, either CBR International Corp, the contact information I gave earlier, or I can be reached through my German office, and I am back and forth between Berlin and uh, Boulder, Colorado, and I may be reached uh, at these phone numbers. And we also have a new website that we just launched. Quick note, uh, German, Germany Trade Invest and, and several of our other partners were involved in our first annual Berlin Symposium on May 20th. A lot of the materials that we presented and, and our guest speakers presented are posted on the website. And you're more than welcome to please go to our website at www.cbrbiotech.com. If you have any questions, let us know, and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer those questions for you. So with that, that concludes uh, my presentation, and I'll turn it back over to uh, Dr. Schmidt, and I'm available for any questions. And again, thank you for your time. And I, I, I will be here, and we will be here collectively at your service. Thank you very much, Steve, uh, for the great presentation. And thank you to all the speakers uh, for their presentations. Now, um, as we suspected, we're already over time. Uh, we actually received a number of questions. Um, I don't think we will be able to tackle them all, but maybe just a few. Um, and then all other questions we'll be happy to, to answer in writing. We'll, we'll send them to the, to the respective speakers. Um, now, first, uh, uh, quick and maybe easy question is uh, there was a question who will be joining um, the bio conference in San Diego uh, for further discussion now for Germany trade and invest I can answer that um, our US colleagues uh, will be in San Diego and will be part of the uh, German pavilion uh, so you can easily find us but we'll be happy to send you the contact details as well now I don't know for any of the other speakers will you be attending uh, San Diego the bio conference can you hear me yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go go ahead. Yeah. This is Steve. I'll I'll go afterwards. Go ahead. Yeah. We will be there. As I said, we have a booth in the German Pavilion by Deutschland. I'll be there, and my colleague Matthias Bach will be there for your information. Yeah. Here's Gura de la Vega. Well, as far as I know, we are also there's some colleagues of mine attending the bio as well. And most surely they'll be at the German pavilion as well. Yes, and this is Steve Novak from CBR. We will also be at a Bio International. Uh, we do not have a booth. I will be there, but I will be working with uh, Bio Deutschland. I believe that will be a focal point for us uh, for distributing our information. But I will certainly be available and am available to set up separate meetings upon any request. I will be there the entire week from the 22nd to the 27th. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll all be there. Um, next question regarding partnering. Um, is there a database uh, that's accessible uh, with all German biotechnology companies? And I guess uh, what, the, what they're looking for is also information about clinical trials that companies are involved in, uh, staff, uh, and so forth. Uh, maybe uh, Claudia Engel. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a good question. We uh, don't host one ourselves, but there are two, uh, two kinds available. One is with a um, website www.biotechnologie.de, so the German spelling of biotechnology with an IE in the end. And that's a federally funded platform, and they have a vast amount of data and also have a searchable database of German biotech companies. And there's one more, but it's very similar. It's, uh, you can find that with www.biotech, without an H, minus finder.de. So these are the two sources. 
in, uh, do you know if they're uh, available in English? The, I know for sure that the one with biotechnology.de is, has also an English site. Okay, and we can post the links on, on, on our Yeah, that's, that's no problem. That's publicly funded, so it's... Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Um, maybe one last question regarding Spartan, and then we'll, we'll move on. Um, again, there was um, people looking for help facilitating contacts, meeting with German companies, uh, academia research organizations. Uh, there was an example of a company has patents, and now they're looking for partners uh, for commercialization. Um, and it sounded like several of our organizations that presented today um, are happy to help. So the question is maybe um, how to go about or who should be the first place of contact just to keep it easy. Um, I don't know, Sandra, do you want to take that one? Yeah, in all cases for, for these inquiries, uh, you can contact GTAI and we, we have great contacts and good contacts into the federal states and the classes and also to Bio-Deutschland and we will find out who is the right person to talk to. So in any cases, uh, contact me or GTAI on the website and we will forward your inquiry to the right persons. So we all work closely together and um, we'll make sure that everyone yeah. is involved too. Uh, sure. Who might be helpful. Um, Next, also maybe for you for Sandra, um, regarding market access, um, how do you find market data for Germany? Um, nutraceuticals was mentioned as an example. And how do you find partners uh, for product promotion and sales? Okay. In general, we provide the market information on the German markets, uh, biotechnology, health, uh, life science, our team that provides some information and our industrial overviews. But for companies that are in specific areas uh, like nutraceuticals, uh, we can provide some special information. We will put together this custom made for each of you if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandra. And one, uh, well, there's actually several for Steve, too. Uh, Steve, there's a question, how did you find your first customers in Germany? And I think what, what the question is, is targeting it, um, did you first open your office in Germany or did you first build a client base, uh, and how did you go about that? Very good question. It was actually that our current clients with a unique need that drove us to open the office in Berlin. Our first two clients were actually current clients of CBR International Corp, who needed the EU authorized representation. That put us on a very tight timeline to open the initial office in Berlin, which gave us that reason to go through the Foundation Act, and we are now uh, aggressively using that base not only to support current clients but to expand our client base and also uh, what we're seeing is there are uh, for example German companies that want to go to the FDA and have no idea how to do that well we are now feeding those inquiries and those clients back to this back to Boulder and, my, and Dr. Gene Novak who just came from the FDA is working with those clients to streamline their process. So we're looking, this is a win-win. Clients first, then the office. Now the office will be taking on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And another uh, question that I liked, uh, if you were to do it all over again, meaning your German subsidiary opening, opening office location, what, if anything, would you do differently today? Honestly, I don't think we would do anything differently because the the support that, and this is this is absolutely true, the support that we receive from Germany Trade Invest, Berlin Partner, and the affiliates that were referred to, uh, that were referred to us from Germany Trade Invest, for example, um, uh, our legal support and our tax support, uh, we wouldn't do, we would not do anything differently. We would do everything exactly the same, the same way because of Germany Trade Invest. Thank you. That's that's good to hear. And that's that's true, and that's that's why we're we're so excited and very grateful. Okay, and maybe one last question, um, also for you, Steve. Um, what's the biggest difference between running a company in the U.S. versus Germany? The biggest issue for us is the um, the German labor law and the human resource requirements, and we're finding that that is um, much different than the U.S. and it's something that we have to get. Uh, we have been very 
um, diligent on becoming educated on how to deal with uh, human resource issues, hiring and payroll, taxes, and again, the, the German labor law. Mm -hmm. um, and I can add, uh, of course, we have, um, as Germany's rate invest, we have a lot of information regarding those topics, too. Um, I'm not sure if we will work with you on that field. Um, you did. We you do did. have overviews just to say how things go, because we actually find quite a few uh, clients are surprised. And, and, of course, before you go and hire someone, uh, you should we, uh, know some basics. Yes, uh, with our initial contacts with GTAI, we received uh, all of the all the resource material first, and we did our research and had a legal review here in the United States before our Foundation Act in October. So we went into this process with both eyes wide open with the material that was provided. Okay, great. Um, I think we need to um, uh, we need to conclude. Uh, we went way over time, twenty minutes longer. Uh, again, my apologies for the technical uh, difficulties. Um, uh, again, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for participating. Uh, thank you for our speakers, uh, for your time and for your expertise. Um, again, the questions we did not answer here, we will answer individually. Uh, we will put up the presentations on the website. Uh, we will also send the link uh, so you can easily find the presentations on our website, and uh, we'll also send out some invitations uh, for the next uh, webinar. Um, yep, with that, I'm going to wish everyone a good day or night, depending on where you are. Thanks again for participating, and thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.